theme for the next panel is reimagining cloud efficiency, tailored solutions for scaling and cost, or cost optimization. May I invite our expert speakers, Raghav Agarwal, Solution Architect, DevOps Lead, Flowbiz, and Sujit PR, Account Manager at Persistent. Raghav, Sujit, Miloni, take your seats. Thank you very much, Suresh. Miloni, you have 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank you for that warning. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Maloney Bhatt, editor of Digital Broadcast, part of economictimes.com, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all into this session. And as Suresh has said, you know, we have 20 minutes, so let's just get into it. You know, in the fast-paced world of uh, Indian startups, the cloud, many say, is no longer just a tool. It is actually a game changer. Think of streamlined scaling, you know, growing your business while also being able to manage costs. But then what is the right approach? You know, are there tailored solutions out there that will help you save the costs, that will make you compliant, that will ensure that your business is secure? Uh, how do you decide, you know, which partner to take along on the journey? Uh, how do you decide or even discern what your business needs actually are? Now, there is a startup that, uh, and many startups face this problem, right? But there is a startup that faced this conundrum, but it actually overcame some of the challenges. And the startup was uh, Flowbiz. It's, it is an SMB-focused neobank. And the partner that they had along the journey was Persistent Systems. So here we're going to talk about how Flowbiz managed to navigate some of the challenges that it faced uh, in their migration to the cloud and how Persistent Systems helped. So very happy to welcome uh, Raghav. Um, Raghav Agarwal is a solutions architect and DevOps lead at Flowbiz. And I also have with me Sujit PR. He is the account manager at Persistent Systems. Hi, Welcome. Everyone. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. All right. Uh, my first question, Raghav, you know, is to you. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, Flowbiz's journey and uh, how it has grown. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, we started with identifying the pain points and uh, uh, gaps in day-to-day uh, -day business activities for business owners. And uh, uh, we realized that even with the second highest penetration of internet uh, in India, uh, the business owners are still using the traditional way for their invoices and uh, sales and their penal statements. So we, uh, we figured out that we can do the digitalization part at that end. And uh, having said that, we started from there and now we, we are the one-stop uh, solutions for all the business-related problems, uh, either it's uh, sales or invoice or accounting and billing softwares. Uh, with that now, the journey is now, we have 8 billion plus uh, uh, business owners onboarding on our platforms, and we generated five million plus of invoices transactions on a monthly basis. All right, so that's uh, fantastic. You know, you have so many customers as you've just enumerated, um, and also you must be generating and dealing with tons of data. So, how did you go about? Uh, you know, what were the challenges that you faced? Say, for example, when it comes to data warehousing, and then how did you go about selecting? Uh, you know, a solution for it. Yeah, as you grow uh, uh, and having a, uh, you have a lot of data, for example, for instance, we have few tables which are in TB in size and uh, eventually start facing managing those uh, tables and data and you, uh, you have multiple GTMs and each GTM has own uh, user personas. So eventually you start facing with managing the different data and you need own, uh, data pipelines and data lakes uh, uh, in place in their solutions. So uh, as you grow and as your data starts growing, you, uh, it's very uh, common to have starting with these problems, managing the data at different locations and serving the data uh, to the users in a, a very less time. So that's the problem we, we face and yes, we have uh, uh, flown through that problem as well. All right, so then how did you know, go about uh, finding a solutions partner? Like, you know, what were your expectations when the solutions partner, which is persistent systems, when they came along, how crucial was it for your business? Yeah, it's definitely very crucial. Uh, uh, as we, uh, as I mentioned, that we, we have a lot of data. We want one extended hand to understand this different perspective of the data at different locations because we need, uh, a, uh, it's not a one solution that can solve your all different data problems. You need a multiple, uh, pro uh, you need a multiple solutions and having an extended head can give you the 10,000 V uh, overview of understanding the different uh, sets of data presented at the different locations and also bringing at one central, pro uh, central uh, place so that you can uh, do your analytics on top of that. So uh, if you have the extended head, like uh, we have the persistent systems that can uh, bring us to understanding how we can bring that, uh, the data from multiple places 
and couldn't put it into a, a one central warehouse uh, like we are using the big queries for, for our analytic systems. Yeah, so that's the, uh, how we are uh, uh, dealing with this as of now. All right, and how did that help you scale? You know? uh, uh, yeah, so in terms of scale, as, uh, as we are, uh, put, uh, bring the data from multiple positions and bringing it to the big query, uh, it's a way uh, uh, platforms where I can run the last uh, analytics with the terabytes of data, and that's what uh, we are solving our analytical problems and OLAP and OLTP problems as well, transactional and analytical queries, and that bring us to solve uh, the different GTM channels and uh, uh, user personas at one central places, and uh, we can use those uh, to generate our central dashboards for all our decision making for our organization. All right, you know that sounds pretty cool. You know, time to bring Sujit in. Uh, Sujit, you know, we'll get into what exactly uh, was the solution that you customized customized for uh, Flowbase, uh, but you know, talk to us about how you help startups. Um, uh, thank you for having me here, everyone. Uh, uh, so we at Persistent System believe that uh, there are two critical factors uh, for any startup to be successful. Uh, one is the digital experience that you give it to your customers and the other one is the user experience where the user gets, right? So these two factors are deep rooted with various multiple other factors. That's where the Persistent as a digital transformation company and modernization partner helps the startups. So I would like to highlight a few of those points. Uh, since we are running short of time, I would like to highlight only three points here, how we can help as a, a, you know, to a startup ecosystem. One is we can actually work as a, a, you know, a, a co-engineering team or a dedicated development team for your organization, right? So any startups who starts the organization, they will have their idea in mind. Probably we need to give life to that uh, idea. So how do we give life to that idea? Probably we might have to develop the product as soon as we can. So that's what we call it as rapid prototyping, right? So as soon as you do rapid prototyping, probably you will earn or you will get more funding from the uh, different kind of VCs available in the market. So we can act as a dedicated development team for your startup or we can also act as a co-development team for your startup. So that's the first point I would like to make. Probably the second point I would like to highlight here is uh, once uh, the product is getting built, probably you might be thinking which is the platform that uh, I might need to put the uh, application so that I can scale at any point in time, right? So that's where our second service helps into place. Uh, that is how it's uh, cloud and infrastructure comes into where, right? So we uh, are a partner with Amazon Web Services. We are a partner of Google Cloud as well as Azure. Uh, any startups who is looking to migrate their workloads, re-architect their workloads, who is looking for a well-architectured framework, we can help you there as well. And the final point I would like to say is, uh, once the product is being built, once the product is being deployed into the cloud, probably the third and the foremost thing which comes into play is the data and the AI, right? So we used to say that uh, you should not keep your money idle for you, right? I mean, we should always, uh, 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 you know, uh, look forward for money to work for you. The same way we used to tell that, that uh, the data should also work for you. You should not keep the data idle. So we have the data scientist team, we have the data analytics team, we can actually help you come across, if you have data silos in place, we can help you move from data silos to data warehouse and data river and then build analytic solutions into it. That's it, thank you. All right, you know, talk to us about how you went about tailoring a solution for flow business challenges, right? And uh, what were the steps uh, that were taken in terms of implementing it to ensuring that, you know, the migration to the cloud was successful? Uh, yes, uh, when, uh, when we started interacting with Flawbase, uh, they were already running on Google Cloud. So the idea behind to engage them with them was to fill the gaps uh, to help them, uh, you know, optimize the resources what they are currently using. And at the same time, uh, we were also reducing the cost what they are currently incurring. And we wanted to make them scale from what they are on today, right? So that's the idea behind engaging with Flopis. And we also act as a bridge between the Google Cloud and any customer. So like in this, uh, in this case, we have acted as a bridge between the Google Cloud and Flopis so that we could fill those gaps which uh, Flopis doesn't have. 
Likewise, any startups who is looking to migrate their workloads, re-architect their workloads, probably you should look at a better partner who can does it for you, right? So uh, I would like to highlight uh, uh, some capabilities or some recognition we have got this week, where we got recognized in Gartner uh, as a challenger uh, for public cloud transformation services this week. Last year, the same time we were a niche player, we could go up the ladder this time and then we have achieved as a challenger this time. So that is for the public cloud transformation services. And we have, uh, believe me, I'm, I'm actually, we have probably around 1,300 Google Cloud certification resources in place. So we are putting our uh, energy, energy and life and enthusiasm mm -hmm. to the company. So that's how that could help uh, our partnership and that also help the floppies to move ahead in the market. All right. Thanks, Sujit, for that. Uh, final sets of questions to both of you. You know, Raghav, to begin with you, what's on the horizon for Flowbiz? You know, do you have any interesting innovations or partnerships coming up? Yeah. Uh, so recently, we have, uh, as I initially mentioned, uh, the persistent system has become a part or uh, is a bridge between uh, uh, between the Flowbiz and the Google Cloud. Uh, so that's the one best partnership we have. And uh, along with this, as we are uh, building towards the credit-based systems and line of credit, we, we are developing a lot of uh, uh, fintech, uh, specifically in terms of data towards the, for help taking decision, helping uh, in our business decision for the uh, fintech part. So that's the part we are developing uh, along with this, uh, helping taking with the uh, persistent system as well. All right, you know, and we wish you all the success. So Jeet, now my final question is to you, you know, what is one of the key takeaways uh, for businesses that are navigating um, the cloud landscape and you know they're looking for a solution uh, for any startups uh, those who are uh, navigating through the cloud uh, i would recommend a couple of steps here uh, define your clear objectives first right uh, you know when i say define your clear objectives uh, uh, you know you have to see uh, are you enhancing your ex user experience while you move it to uh, one cloud to another cloud right and are you optimizing your workloads and are you reducing the cost at the same time uh, and second point i would like to tell is uh, is about you need to go back and check your it assessment and do your own study what needs to be migrated first and what needs to be optimized first and probably uh, the boom around us is about cloud native so you need to look at what are the components you need to replace replace with cloud native solution for example db as a service platform as a service right so that's the second point third i would say choose your right strategy uh, uh, you know probably the some customers some startups would have uh, you know the data localization norms in place data compliance in place so those startups can look for a uh, hybrid model uh, and obviously i would recommend every startup to consider multi cloud adoption also so that uh, you don't get locked in with any of the cloud provider. Second thing is the resource availability, the competency in place. You are going to gain more insight about it. And you can leverage the strength of all the public cloud technology in place. Right. So and the last and the final part or the final point is uh, you should choose the right partner. You should identify whether that partner has got the capability to do the workload that you have, whether that partner is competent enough, capable is capable of doing whatever the workloads that you have it with you, right? So that's it. Thank you. All right. You know, that was pretty comprehensive. Thank you very much, Sujit. And thank you very much, uh, Raghav. Now, both Sujit and Raghav are going to be outside. So if any one of you have any questions for them, uh, then, you know, you can meet them up uh, outside. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.